Hello, how are you doing? Today we will talk about tokenization of real estate and uh, we have our guest expert, uh, Nilay Saha, who is co-founder and uh, CTO of a new project called uh, Raid Circles. And uh, they have a platform for tokenization of real estate and uh, they have offerings uh, for both uh, large investors and as well uh, retail smaller investors who can enjoy the benefits of uh, fractionalized uh, real estate. Uh, so great to have you here, Nilay. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So can you tell us about your background and uh, how did you get involved in the blockchain industry? I know that you came from the banking. Yeah, so um, I came into blockchain literally, I think the first time I heard about blockchain's 2017 cycle, I was working for um, um, Audi at that time. I have been working as a solutions architect uh, in, in different enterprise, uh, B2B, uh, let's say larger enterprises, uh, including Audi, um, Prozibian Satines, and um, lately in Deutsche Bank, I uh, was the last employer. And it was between basically like in between jobs when I was like having a gap uh, since being a solutions architect, I kind of probe into new technologies uh, all the time because that that kind of that's what my area is. I have to be updated with new technology. And then I came into I was trying to understand how blockchain will uh, really influence us. And um, and then I started with Bitcoin. I started to read the white paper of Bitcoin, came into Ethereum. I was not so happy with Ethereum the way they were um, they were doing stuff because we are always hearing a lot of uh, major hacks happening um, on on Ethereum in the last cycle. It was very common, uh, billions of dollars of hack. And that time I started to probe and then found Cardano, which was like among the top ten coins that time. And um, I kind of saw how they were doing it. And that's how I came into and then I understood I started to a little bit know a little bit more about proof of work, proof of stake. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's how I kind of even got myself introduced into the blockchain industry. So I knew about the drawbacks of Bitcoin at the same time, saw the advantages that proof of stake offers. And Cardano was one of the leading proof of stake chains. They were trying to do things right and doing a lot of uh, at least a good amount of research before uh, uh, kind of releasing uh, their software. And that kind of resonated well with me because I come from the enterprise background where we also like uh, follow a certain set of processes before uh, releasing a software into the market. And uh, that kind of resonated with me. Uh, and that's the reason I kind of thought, yes, this is the correct way that things should evolve. And that was kind of my entry point into blockchain saying that, yes, this industry will evolve if we do things right. And um, and that's how I started. Uh, did you buy at that time any Bitcoin or other Cardano? Yeah, so uh, initially, like I actually came into this area with the love of, uh, of course, uh, uh, the software part of it, um, uh, the technology part of it. And then, of course, when I saw the potential that it could bring, um, I kind of um, also started to invest uh, slowly into the ecosystem. Um, and um, and since then, more or less, uh, my thesis around blockchain is that, yes, it will impact, it will grow, uh, but um, it, it will kind of gradually change our lives. And unknown to us, it will actually impact our lives because the underlying infrastructure um, uh, will gradually change towards blockchain, um, slowly but surely. Um, and um, yeah, I became an investor in, in a slow way. And I think right now, I kind of, after being here um, since last four years, I would say that I'm a convert into the blockchain industry. Um, I like the way it is evolving, but uh, at the same time, it I do see realize that it's going to take us a bit of a time to get into the mainstream kind of, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you that blockchain will change and actually already change in quite a lot of industries. So you yes. decided uh, to disrupt uh, real estate industries. So can you tell us more? How did the idea of starting rate circles come to you? And uh, can you tell more about the concept? Yes. So the read circles uh, started as a concept myself and another friend of mine, Anurag was there, he was in the Silicon Valley. 
and um, he used to work for Google earlier. And um, we kind of, I was discussing about what, what can we do in a small ways. And we picked up kind of the hot cake around that time saying that it, this is kind of the final frontier of, of tokenization, the largest segment. And it, 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 we're trying to say that, okay, if can we digitize real estate? Because this is kind of the, I would say really the last frontier. So we kind of picked up one of the hardest problems uh, for tokenization. And since technology is my core forte, more or less, I foresaw that you can do a lot once uh, you digitize this segment. Um, because typically right now, this is kind of the most brick and mortar kind of uh, industry, right? Yeah. Uh, where a lot of work is there. A um, lot of people are involved, the entire country, let's say the uh, ecosystem around involves governments, involves real estate agents, uh, big centralized enterprises, including banks. And um, it's just a matter of time that once uh, the uh, the mainstream um, uh, blockchain, uh, let's say the presence comes, and we are already seeing that in different forms, starting with the ETF uh, 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 this year of Bitcoin, that mainstream um, uh, funding is coming into this industry. Um, and uh, it's bound to happen that uh, many areas of the real world, of which real estate is the biggest one, uh, will be disrupted. Now, why did we uh, choose real estate? Because we saw that this is one of the things that is very ideal for disruption, is ideal for tokenization-based disruption. Um, and at the same time, I, we did have our, within our friends and families, we do have real estates. We also saw the potential that it brought if we could, re, re, let's say, temporarily release some amount of uh, uh, wealth that is locked up in this asset class, and it's very hard to uh, kind of uh, bring out uh, uh, without a substantial, let's say, time, effort, and energy being involved if you have to deal with banks and go there and release it in form of reverse mortgage and all. Uh, typically, you get a very bad deal uh, because the, the, the centralized agencies typically have a lot more I would say um, risk averseness. And when you really need the liquidity, they typically come in the form of like uh, more, um, I would say not really exploitative, but at the same time, they they are a bit hard to kind of get financing from all the time. And, uh, and you have to rely on many of these centralized agencies. And that one of the core things that I started with blockchain was that I really, wanted to um, kind of find a way to distribute power to the edges. And that has remained as a core ethics in, in, in how read circles forms, that we want to allow people to own their data. We want to allow uh, people to invest with other people in a peer-to-peer -peer mm -hmm. manner, manner as much as possible. And, um, and uh, with this as the ethics, then we thought about how can we do that, the same thing for the real estate industry. And that's where we started with Read Circle saying that it should allow, uh, let's say, the current uh, um, people who are involved in real estate industry to do their work more efficiently and in an entirely end-to-end -end digital manner. And we will be providing, let's say, a platform and a set of tools uh, to help these set of people to do their own business. So it is not a standard, let's say, a website which sells you real estate. There are the thousands of them. Uh, what would make a difference is that if we can integrate, for example, all the entire value chain of this ecosystem in a form of um, uh, uh, peer to peer identification, uh, mm -hmm. uh, peer uh, selling, um, then uh, the entire digitization process of real estate, uh, which is uh, which is actually we found out to be not a trivial problem to solve. Uh, because the um, uh, moment you deal with these different aspects, you see that real estate kind of brings together all the challenges that the real world actually has to offer. Identity is one of them. Uh, then after that, verification is uh, another one. How do you verify that a real estate uh -huh. is truly own? Um, and um, who verifies it? Uh, how far can you do with or without the government involvement, for example? So many a times people associate us saying that government is doing that, why are we doing it, for example? Uh, but little realizing that there is a very big secondary market which functions without the intervention of the government already. 
you don't go to the government when you have to take a mortgage against your house, right? You go to a bank and bank is definitely not the government. So in some cases, they may be proxy because they hold some licenses, but definitely they are not the government, right? So, and, be, and having the background of financial industry, that kind of helped me because I come from regulated industry as well. So I understand the nuances within the regulated industry and how those uh, industries are evolving. And that kind of helps me to plan ahead saying that, okay, these are coming. I know what's coming in the, in the, in the regulated space for the tokenization. I know these institutions are actually moving towards uh, digital uh, 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 platforms like what we are trying to build. Uh, probably they are also trying to go to more towards blockchain. So everything is going, going towards the blockchain. So it means that when we move towards the blockchain, you kind of, go into the same um, uh, kind of the flow and things actually become easier from here on. Right now, things may be difficult because the industry has not yet started or, or even they started, it has started in the fund management industries where uh, it's like a, a, a entirely, uh, a, let's say B2B business. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do is kind of for the real estate industry, we are trying to say, you can just own your own data you can now bring everything onto the platform and you can get it verified by real world agents, for example. And uh, that's how we see read circles evolving. So we saw really that the real estate, if you take it as an industry can be tokenized uh, and you can start to spin out different um, kind of processes around the real world uh, using real estate at the center. And it was an interesting problem for us also, like it was an interesting problem to solve. And that's why we kind of started with that and tried to attack the most relevant problems of the real world um, uh, industry. Um, so we are kind of a bit ahead of the curve in a sense. Uh, very few people are kind of addressing the, the, the foundational parts of it uh, because they are uh, actually, they are hard a bit uh, once you try to do it. And, um, that's 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 why we started. We saw that there are a lot of open topics and hard problems to solve, and uh, and we knew that this area will be addressed. And precisely now, you see that BlackRock is coming forth. They are opening up the doors to this industry, and more and more uh, transparency, more and more government regulations towards the digitization will come. And we kind of foresaw that, and that's why we started Red Circles. Uh, yeah. So now we see a lot of. Uh, these trillion dollar funds like BlackRock and many others that Larry Fink talking on TV that everything in the future will be tokenized. Uh, but still, we um, like uh, within the last years, there have been so many other real estate uh, tokenization projects, but we didn't really see like such a big success in this industry. So why do you think is it so? How are you different? And how do you see the development of real estate tokenization in the next five years? Yeah, so um, just like I think one of the key things that you have to understand in the in the technology development is something called an S-curve. So people who are involved in technology development, they know this very well. So it means that just like Bitcoin in its very early phases, uh, you had to undergo a lot of distrust, mistrust, let's say, saying that whether this is just a fake thing, uh, it will not work, we don't see success, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But yet the underlying, uh, let's say, the, uh, the undercurrent, so outside you may not see anything happening, but the undercurrent is very, very uh, strong right now. So it means that if you actually dip your toes into this industry, you will see that a lot is happening underneath. Um, so why uh, and what are the things that you would like to see uh, in order for this industry to move forward? A uh, few of the things are currently taking place. Uh, MICA regulations has come into EU. Um, I think these will spread also kind of to other countries as well. And um, and in, in and uh, uh, the same thing, digital identities are coming to EU mm -hmm. um, in years. And in this way, these underlying, let's say the undercurrents of tokenization, the foundations of tokenizations uh, are gradually taking shape. And once these uh, kind of becomes mainstream, so all these technologies take time. Um, in the S-curve, you initially have very, very slow growth. You don't see it. It's an undercurrent. But moment it comes to the surface, 
it grows exponentially because then mm -hmm. you can just spread the technology with very little barriers to a large set of people. And uh, we want to kind of position ourselves in this initial stages to kind of uh, properly build that foundation into which we can integrate, let's say, digital identities. We can work with the regulated industries um, uh, in a proper way. Um, and uh, once we integrate these things, it's a kind of platform. That's why we call it a platform, means that we will provide uh, the mature tool set uh, that will help others to build upon uh, any other real estate um, based verticals, for example, right? And there are many of them uh, that you could build uh, later on. And we are therefore trying to slowly move towards a regulated uh, institutional adoption of blockchain. And, uh, and since real estate is to a large extent already institutionalized, large institutions own a lot of real estate, um, and they will kind of force open the doors of regulations. And you're already seeing that with BlackRock. So because of this S-curve, because of the strong undercurrent, because there are many institutions putting money in, what you will see is that a gradual outgrowth of many, many uh, adoption technologies. And once you are in the market with those technologies that are there and have a well um, a good offering, um, it is just a matter of time and uh, let's say an effort um, that uh, there will be an adoption of this technology for the mainstream. And uh, what many players try to do is that, uh, and uh, they try to say that I'll be adopted within the next one year or next half a year, and, and I will show a mm -hmm. tremendous amount of organization. And the problem lies there is that, yes, you can do. Startups always need a very strong traction within a very short time to kind of show that things are working and, um, and you are in the market and the market is kind of blowing up. Uh, but the fact remains is that many of these things are um, are developing slowly in a in a in a as I said in different uh, parts of the uh, segments, different parts of the industry. BlackRock is a segment, for example, they own a lot of uh, large real estates, and they will work towards tokenizing their real estate, and then standards will arise. So what we are trying to do is to set saying that okay, from given the background that we have. Uh, we will try to develop this technology in such a way that when EU identities come into place, we can integrate them. Uh, so uh, we are working with wallet providers and others to uh, get that stuff done. And once that is integrated, then people should be able to uh, use this platform to upload all their assets and tokenize them and legalize them, right? And uh, once you have legalized and tokenized uh, them in a form of an NFT, we call it an NFT because that's a bulk of data uh, that uh, is owned by the person himself. Mm -hmm. Then once you have laid that foundation of a very, uh, a, let's say a verification, verified NFT, uh, that's a true tokenization. Tokenization is not about issuing some tokens, uh, thousand tokens or something, right? Uh, that's fractionalization. That's only the second step. You can only fractionalize something once it is legally accepted and verified, right? Uh, you cannot, otherwise you, the fractionalization holds no value. If you just upload some picture NFTs, I could copy the picture and I could claim it to be mine. What says that it belongs to you unless and until there is some kind of legal authority behind the whole thing. So here, for example, we are going to therefore work with uh, real world actors. Uh, verifiers are actually a role created within the MICA regulations in EU. So they are legal entities, uh, legal persons who will be verifiers of real world assets. And they will be able to actually, their signatures, their backing will actually say that, yes, this is legitimate. So we foresaw that. So mm -hmm. that's why our platform started off saying that, how do I create something which is verifiable? Means you pick up that data and you can verify that data by yourself and say that, yes, it's verified. Yes, it conforms to the regulatory environment and so on and so forth, right? And um, uh, with that foundation, it's very easy then for us to say that now once you have a tokenized asset in the form of an NFT, you could split up the NFT, you can lend against the NFT and so on and so forth. So different instruments can start getting created around this. And uh, that's actually the start of the true real world NFT. Now you could say that why hasn't it happened uh, uh, earlier? There were security token standards. Uh, I've been questioned earlier that security tokens, uh, actually also there has been security token standards created. 
but as I said, these adoption curves take seven to eight years. This is how technology works. So just because you create a technology standard doesn't mean it will be adopted into the real world. It does take time. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, I, I think we are in the brink of that disruption, given that big players are now st uh, 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 stepping their foot, feet onto this one. A lot of money inflow will happen. Regulatory changes will happen. Uh, Country-based regulations are already being adopted for fractionalization. India recently actually public, uh, let's say, made fractionalization legal. Uh, they have certain guidelines that you need to follow and you could basically sell fractionalized asset. It is as legal as selling a big house or a big asset as a whole. So it is absolutely legal to buy a fractionalized asset. And same with micro-regulations in EU and probably in other countries they will follow. So with these standards being open, uh, standards being adopted, um, there, there's only one direction. I basically call crypto as a black hole. Uh, means if you know what black hole is, means you can go in, light can go in, but cannot come out. So it means that it's a one directional path, a unidirectional path. So uh, digitization, tokenization, either in the form of NFT or anything else uh, is actually a one way path. And I believe that we are on that path and uh, we are making very substantial progress. Uh, mm -hmm. People are actually coming to us saying that we need this because otherwise you cannot how would you tokenize an asset? How would you say that this asset is actually an asset in the real world and I can actually issue uh, anything against it? Uh, you need to verify it. And that's where we kind of said that we'll first take the basic steps and then we'll go towards the path of uh, so-called real FI, which is kind of DeFi for real world assets, right? Mm -hmm. And most of the people try to just take an easy path saying I have a piece of paper and I just... Um, issue against uh, against this paper uh, and NFT and and people have to trust me. Well, that's a very hard take. Uh, people generally cannot trust that because we know in regulatory environment that's not trustworthy enough um, unless or until it's backed up by the government it's itself. So, and uh, actually our job becomes much easier from here on because right now we still have, let's say the identity wallets and others not yet there. It's going to come uh, in the next two to three years in the, uh, within the EU. Um, and uh, once those come, you will you will immediately see that life is much easier for digitization and adoption of uh, these kind of token-based uh, economies of scale uh, picking up very fast. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that is great that uh, you have in your solution along with the advancements uh, by the regulators. And uh, what markets uh, do you target first? Uh, what countries are you targeting? Yeah, since I'm in the EU, um, you will be one. Um, certainly, uh, this this project was created out of Berlin. I'm based out of Berlin, and um, and therefore I do know a little bit about the regulatory environment there. Um, there are kind of some hurdles to overcome, uh, but at the same time, I do feel that. I'm in the right position to kind of address the the legal legalization within within Germany, and uh, and the other surrounding countries. Um, so that's one certainly the place where we are going to target. Um, secondly, I think we have team members also from Mexico. Uh, they are also very eager uh, to start tokenizing and to uh, bring in the adoption of this platform in that country. And uh, India, of course, is also a target because, yeah, our team also, uh, other uh, uh, Malay is there. He's from India. I'm from India originally. And uh, so India remains also as a starting point. And other CMOs, uh, uh, Manush is there as also from India. And that becomes also very natural, um, let's say, a, a place where we will start. So we're just taking the first steps. Uh, U.S. remains as a big, um, let's say, uh, I do like um, the platform to be used in U.S. It's one of the most progressive countries in terms of uh, innovation and technology for the last um, many decades. And certainly we want to go there and we are keeping our eyes open on the regulatory environment there. And we will certainly be there as well in the coming years. And as well, in uh, the beginning of May, you have your liquidity bootstrapping event uh, for the token. So can you tell more about uh, REIT's token, what's the use of REIT and about uh, its launch? Yes. So uh, we are um, in the beginning of May, we are uh, doing our liquidity bootstrapping event. It's called an LB event uh, with uh, Sunday Swap, which is one of the largest DEXs on Cardano. 
and uh, we are very happy to have them as a as a partner um and uh, uh, this event basically is a prize discovery event uh -huh. so it means is that um we are not saying that well, on the token that we are launching should have a so much price but we leave it up to the community and investors to tell us what the price should be now the reason we are floating this token is that it's backed by um, and uh, our platform as we built it right so what we said is that we want to build up the platform in a in a way that uh, um, <clears throat> so we're building a platform in a way that uh, it should allow everybody else to tokenize the plat and the and their asset themselves right uh -huh. and it means they are actually doing real work on the platform so when they're doing a real work on the platform uh that means that that will be rewarded in form of tokens so the tokens come into circulation uh when they do that real work so it kind of tries to go into the ethos of how bitcoin is mined you actually spend uh let's say energy in computing uh, uh some problem set and then once that energy is spent, then you actually mint a Bitcoin. And uh -huh. that's called so called the hash rate, the hardness of the problem. And as the as the time goes on, the hardness increases, and therefore you have to spend more and more energy. That's a proof of work. But we try to translate as much as possible uh, to that in saying that, okay, now if there is a true utility of the platform, uh, we can therefore tokenize that effort in the form of a token. So in that case, this becomes a platform token, which drives the utility of the platform. And uh, and the plan, the token will be called REIT. And uh, there is a very, uh, I would say it's a very, we have kept the tokenomics uh, driven by a smart contract. So which means that uh, over time only issuance will take place. And mm -hmm. the initial bootstrapping event will have some allocations of token to create the initial liquidity pool because it's a proof of stake based network yeah. Cardano. Cardano. And therefore uh, we will uh, uh, have an initial liquidity created. And then once, and th for that, the LB event is happening. And how do you as well envision the future growth um, and expansion of uh, rate circles? Can you share your future plans? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, we do have our roadmap. So if you were to go into our, um, let's say, read circles website, and you had to look at our roadmap, there are uh, several parts um, of that um, uh, platform that we have envisaged. Um, that what we have in the coming years, for example, uh, is um, that we are going to already we are creating our first DAO, which is our read circles DAO which will govern the uh, token and token issuance and later on the governance. Uh, so that DAO is being formed right now. And uh, then uh, we are also creating the so-called the real world Oracle system means that when we do the task of reviewing, it's not centralized. We are trying to kind of create an Oracle based system for real world uh, mm -hmm. where real world actors, the like reviewers will actually come and do the reviews, publish the data, the data will go into the blockchain and then basically linked up with an NFT. Uh, so it's not what one person says, but what the consensus of reviewers tell something about a thing, uh, about an asset. So that's one of the things uh, we call it a review oracle, uh, which is basically required if you have to digitize any asset and you have to have any kind of information exchange, you need this oracle. That's what we are building. Oh uh then um and then after that so you will have actually a marketplace later on of reviewers so moment somebody wants to do a review of an asset a task will be published into that marketplace and anybody can bid for it uh, we also are creating it in such a way that it will be business friendly with the enterprise so we're making an enterprise platform where enterprises can create their own uh, system and they can basically start to tokenize their own asset on the platform mm -hmm. um uh, themselves so it's a it's a sort of a you can call it a SaaS or a pass based platform that's being built around tokenization um then we are bringing the concept of something called an auditing it means that if you upload some data it remains valid for a certain time because you have, you have had it verified but you can actually audit the data on an annual basis for example and then um, and that data will get updated as you audit it so you can keep your own data updated you don't need any third parties to do uh -huh. that. 
you can just update your own data and that would be again verified once you publish uh, 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 upload the data others verify it and then it's again you have your updated data in your nft which you own so in this way um, basically uh, you can trust that data because it will be audited on an annual basis and later on as we see it there will be auditors who will be legally again allowed to do that auditing for example so you can then bring in the all the real world concepts that are there in the regulated industry are coming into the uh, into the uh, digital space via the blockchain. Um, then we are going to create uh, something. Uh, we are going to because we are heavily right now reliant on document parsing, uh, and we are going to implement an AI platform for doing that as well. So part of the verification jobs will be partly using an AI com uh, companion sort of, uh, which will help the verifiers to review large amount of documents and to uh -huh. uh, and and to do that much faster and it also helps in some sort of uh, learning over time about which country what documents what kind of uh, things that are required for regulatory compliance um, then uh, we are also trying to work uh, with another partner within cardano um, for decentralized identity uh, which would be one of the core things uh, decentralized identity comes in different forms as i told you you has their own digital identity uh, regulations that are there eids it's called uh, it's an open kind of it's an open source uh, based uh, standard that's been created within eu and i think gradually what we will see is that many of the identity uh, platforms which are coming up in different uh, blockchains they will have to merge there into the regulatory environment of these countries mm -hmm. So that's uh, a digital identity mobile app will be there, which will allow verifiers to be onboarded, for example, right? And um, then we will gradually introduce all the, let's say uh, for the data part, um, uh, compliance with the uh, regulatory environment, all the encryption, uh, encryption vaults will come. Uh, as I told you, B2B enterprise readiness is going to come. So it means that enterprises can now work on this platform. Um, and uh, the entire software will be geared towards uh, merging, let's say, digital identities uh, with uh, the enterprise uh, software, sort of, uh -huh. right? So that's a merger of Web 2 and Web 3.0, right? And uh, then we also want to integrate um, uh, uh, stable coins um, uh, gradually on, on our system, right? And uh, then, then also another thing we want to build definitely is the lending DAO. Um, so it means that lending as an instrument, as a DeFi instrument, in collaboration probably with other DEXs, we're going to create some kind of lending platform where other DAOs can publicize their uh, liquidity and so that when people actually uh, opt for a liquidity uh, on the platform using either NFTs um, or fractionalized tokens, they have an easy way to uh, get that liquidity in form uh -huh. of um, so towards that standard, we want to work with different DAOs, uh, creating some kind of uh, protocol where we can talk to other DAOs in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a blockchain manner um, so that uh, through that protocol, we can easily distribute liquidity across, uh, across uh, many, many uh, uh, regulated DAOs, let's say, right? Then um, one of our founders, uh, Manush, he, uh, he has a deep expertise in metaverse. He actually has already created a real estate metaverse in order to streamline many of the sales processes. He comes from marketing background. So one of the things that we will be working on is how to integrate a metaverse. Uh, once you onboard an asset or real estate, uh, how to create a metaverse entity for that one. And then finally, multi-chain is a very big thing I think we want to pursue. I do feel that um, blockchain is, although it looks isolated as a space, every chain working in their own uh, kind of bubble, but gradually I think it will come, when it comes to true mainstream adoption, you will see that many protocols will be talking the same language. Uh -huh. Chain example is already trying to bring banking onto a single kind of uh, 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 system where all the banking, software uh, the that's the settlement layer is coming onto the blockchain via chain link so it can already transact data across chains across different banking protocols and it allows uh, let's say the the web 2.0 finance to be merged onto the blockchain and as these tokenized assets also come you'll see that the merger of these things will actually take place 
So, um, uh, so when the real world entity is being tokenized and coming onto the blockchain, the real world finance coming onto the blockchain. And when these two merge via different blockchain constructs, you will see the real, let's say, emergence of uh, of a truly digital economy. But it will take some time. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing your plans uh, with us. It's really exciting and we'll definitely follow your journey. I will leave the link uh, on the Read Circles platform under this video so you can check out more. Thank you for the interview, Nilay. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much.